as a coach, you know, what do you look at, you know, for substitution? Uh, when do you want to bring somebody out? Uh, or is there any uh, set time, you know, when uh, the sub go in, or or you have to one person make a mistake and you pull them out right away, or? <laughs> Yeah, I think, you know, at halfback, for example, you know, it's probably the most cardio demanding position in the game, isn't it? So the halfback's running, the number nine, scrum half, is running more than anybody else on the field, and maybe the seven. And you may have a preconceived time of, of substituting nine. I didn't like to substitute McCaw, uh, <laughs> unless we're up by 50 with two minutes to go. Um, so. You, know, you might you might have a preconceived idea that you're going to sub your half after 55 or 60, uh, whatever it may be. But I I don't think substitution is done well because I think it's far too prejudged, and I think often you're taking off some of the best players on the field because that's what you thought you should do pre-game, and you discuss that with the other coaches perhaps or. And I think you need to read it as it goes along. And there might be a guy having a shocker and you might want to relieve him of his anxiety. <laughs> um, but you know, that doesn't happen very often. But you know, I just, just think we're substituting for substitution's sake and not for a reason. And apart from six, from nine and, and seven, they're the guys who, who are running the miles and running more miles than anybody else. You might have a guy who's has come back off an injury, you know, it's his first game back, you're going to give him 40 and you've, you're going to stick to that plan because that's part of his, his, his program to come back to, to full fitness and full 80 minutes. And there'll be some of that, of course. Um, I remember we played, we played the Australians in Hong Kong and um, Dan Carter, we said we could only play for 40 minutes and Steve Donald came on in the second half and had a shocker. <laughs> it cost us the game. We didn't play again for a long time, but you know, sometimes those preconceived things bite you in the bum, but at the end of the day, you know, you just got to look after your players and that was the policy of the medical staff and the coaches. And Steve Donald, who was a hell of a good man, um, didn't play, that was Hong Kong probably, yeah, 2-9, uh, any year tour. And then in the World Cup in 211, Carter rips the adductor tendon off the bone in a, in a practice, and um, it's not a good day. A part of our mental skills thing was the unexpected is going to happen, handle it, and that's what happened in 2-7 two, two with the referee in the quarter final against the French. He was the unexpected and we couldn't handle him. And so that's where it derived from. So we had this thing, the unexpected is going to happen, handle it, and Dan rips the adductor tendon off the bone. I go into the dressing shed, just like this. I say to the guys, look, the unexpected has happened, fellas. We'll handle this. Colin Slade, who was the second 10, he'll play bloody well, and we'll all go up and play for Carter. A bit of bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. Anyway, in the next game, we're playing Argentina in the quarterfinal at Eden Park, and Colin Stade does the same thing. So we've got Aaron Cruden in for, for Daniel, and I have to find a replacement. And I'm thinking, should I play myself? You <laughs> <laughs> know? And I think probably that's not the right decision. And Wayne Smith played a bit at 5'8, but he was, you know, he's in the 50s. And I thought, oh, Beaver. Steve Donald hadn't played since Hong Kong. So I rang him. Doesn't answer the phone. <laughs> rang him and rang him. And I said to Mills, Billy Aina, who some of you will know, he's a good mate of his, I said, look, I can't get hold of Beaver, Mills. He said, I know a young lady will know exactly where he is. <laughs> Two minutes later, he rings me. I said, what are you doing, Beaver? He said, I'm weight baiting, Ted. I said, oh, okay. He said, I said, how much you got? He said, I've got eight kilos. I said, that's a shitload of white bait. I tell you what, he said, I said, if you bring that to the Heritage Hotel in Auckland, you can play in the final of the Rugby World Cup. <laughs> Which he did. <laughs> Fed the team. Cruden does his knee in the final against the French. <laughs>
Donald comes on. God. And kicks this goal. Like he kicked the fastest penalty goal in the history of the game. Boom, boom. Goes down the, down the middle, just inside the right hand upright. <laughs> we finished up smashing the mate seven. <laughs> and that's why I'm talking to you today. <laughs> ah, seven, eight. You know, a Frenchman standing over here. Heaven forbid. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Had a gutsful? Good. Thanks very much for listening. <laughs> <laughs>